fear. Fear was in the air that day. So much fear, you could cut it with a knife. Fear that God had abandoned his people and had walked away. What's more, people feared that God's wrath lay just around the corner. That God was set to rain down hell upon his people. You brood of vipers, John bellowed at the crowd. Eyes glazed and finger pointing. The axe is already at the root of the trees. And every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. It was a fiery baptism of repentance. John preached that day by the Jordan River. His was a stern prophetic warning. Relentlessly, John pressed all who were there to turn from their sin and seek God's forgiveness before the fires of hell burn them up. But whether overcome with fear or not, first one, then two, then people from all over the hillside stood up and made their way down to the river's edge. Jew and Gentile, rich and poor, tax collector, farmer, prostitute, and soldier. They took their first steps toward baptism. Slowly they moved down from the hillside into the line of people that had formed along the shore. One step at a time, they inched forward toward John and the waters of baptism. Who was this wild man in from the desert? They asked themselves in silence. Who was this man who preached repentance in the face of the coming wrath of God? Who dressed in clothes made of camel hair, who ate locusts and wild honey? Was he the Messiah? The living water? Was he the one who would quench their thirst for God's mercy? And knowing these questions were all in their hearts, John answered them all. I baptize you with water, but one more powerful than I will come, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And at that moment, the silhouette of a man appeared, set against the brilliance of the morning sun. And the people watched as the man waded through the shallow water toward John. The two men talked for a moment about what no one will ever know. But the people sensed that something incredible was about to happen. Their fear began to fade, and a sense of great anticipation tumbled into their hearts. Finally, John the Baptist put his arm around the man's shoulders and lowered him gently into the Jordan River. And Jesus was baptized. The people watched as Jesus made his way back to the shore, and dropped to his knees in prayer. And as he was praying, heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven saying, You are my Son, whom I love, and with you I am well pleased. Now it's sad to say, that many of us today continue to approach baptism out of fear. Out of our fear of God's wrath and hell's fire. Out of our all-consuming fear of the future. 
Many of us see baptism as a way to escape eternal punishment. Like many of those who met John in the waters of the Jordan River, we see baptism as an insurance policy against impending disaster, as a vaccination of sorts against imminent catastrophe. And so we rush to the baptismal font to protect ourselves and our children. Many parents rush their children to baptism for fear their children are denied access to heaven in the event of an early death. But it's my belief that this fear is unwarranted. And nothing would make me happier than to see our fears replaced by joy and celebration. Fear should not be the issue. If anything is at issue, it's our forgetfulness. We forget that God's love is far greater than his wrath by definition. Because God is love. At least according to Jesus. We forget that at a time when the people feared most of all the coming wrath of God, God sent Jesus to be with them. It was not hell God rained down on his people, but love. We forget, or perhaps we were never told, that baptism marks a new beginning, an initiation, if you will. The baptism of our Lord marked the beginning of his ministry on earth. It was not a baptism of repentance that Jesus underwent. To the contrary, it was a baptism of initiation. Jesus' baptism marked a beginning and a commitment on his part to do God's will in the world. Jesus' baptism marked a beginning and a promise to promote God's justice and righteousness to all who would listen. Jesus' baptism marked a beginning and a pledge to stand in solidarity with God and with the poor, the oppressed, the blind, the lame, and the prisoner. And through our baptisms, we are given that same opportunity to commit, to promise, to pledge, to begin. Right now, God is poised to share with us not the fires of hell, but the fire of his Holy Spirit to perform God's work in the world. often we forget that baptism marks our initiation as well. Our beginning, our commitment to be working members on God's team. Kyle was nowhere to be found. And Reverend Tom missed him. In the weeks following his baptism and confirmation on Pentecost Sunday, Kyle was noticeably missing. Several other members of the confirmation class asked about him too, as did his confirmation mentor. Kyle and his family had come to the congregation when he was in grade 5. They attended sporadically. So Reverend Tom was more than a little surprised when he asked Kyle and his parents if he was interested in joining the class. And without hesitation, they responded positively. 
In this congregation, the confirmation class happened during the ninth grade. Kyle and his parents came for the orientation meeting and agreed to covenant to participate in one mission activity, two field excursions, work with a mentor, and weekly classes for study and exploration. Kyle was serious in attending and rarely missed a class or event. He quickly became a significant part of the group and developed some wonderful friendships with other ninth graders who had barely known him. Since Kyle had not yet been baptized, he was not only confirmed but also baptized on Pentecost Sunday. It was a marvelous celebration for all, the confirmands, their families, and their mentors. But that is pretty much where it ended. And that is when Reverend Tom knew that they had done something wrong. When Reverend Tom checked in with Kyle and his folks, they all seemed a little surprised that he was calling and checking up on them. Reverend Tom distinctly remembers his mother saying, Oh well, I guess I thought Kyle was all done. I mean, he was baptized and confirmed and everything. Isn't he done? And that's the problem, isn't it? Despite our best intentions, despite all that we say and try to communicate to, many people seem to think that the baptism of the infant or the young adult or the senior adult is the culminating activity of faith and that we are all done. <laughs> but Matthew's description of Jesus' baptism tells us the opposite. As I said before, in Matthew's text, the baptism of Jesus marks not the ending of his ministry, but its beginning. It marks his launching. It marks his commissioning to begin the public ministry to which he was called. It marks his initiation into a life of service to God and God's creation. So too, our baptism marks our initiation into the Christian faith and into lives of service. We are not born Christian, but in baptism we become Christian. In baptism, our journey into Christ-like living begins. As newly initiated Christians, we are brought into union with the person and the work of Jesus Christ. We join in his ministry, and we are incorporated into his church, Christ's body. And I think that these are some of the things that many of us have forgotten about baptism. Or perhaps we're never told. So these are the things that give us great cause to celebrate. Maybe fear is a powerful catalyst that brings us to repentance. But I prefer to think that God's love is the more powerful magnet that draws us to the baptismal font. Baptism is not a vaccination or an insurance policy against impending disaster. It is not just meant for the relieving of our tortured consciousness or make us feel collectively warm about the family of God. No doubt there's fire to be walked through in this life. Truth to be spoken to. Power and healing to be offered to the whole of creation. This is the important and often 
difficult ministry into which we are initiated through baptism. But it is for such things as these that God has given us baptism, which is the gift of God's Holy Spirit, living and active not only in Jesus' life, but in ours. Surely, this has to be true. That at the moment of our baptism, God smiles and whispers in our hearts the words, You are my child, whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. Now get to work. 